Yes. All right. We're back. We're back. Back. We're here. Coming into the studio um, on arrival, you might notice that this fan is on. It usually is on. Tends to, it can get warm in here sometimes. That's what it's for. It, it helps even out the temperature. Um, typically, you don't have to worry about this piece of equipment here, this console. But however, sometimes you walk in and there is a um, this volume might be up on the web, on the uh, continuing weather channel. Um, we turn it down right here. This little small knob, and we just turn it down, and it's not it's not to be used. We have a, a program going on in here, and, and we not we don't need to have that that noise going on. Um, the turntables and the mixer should be in the off position. Should they be left on, there's a power switch back here. It's a rocker switch in the back of the unit. Uh, you can just turn that off. The turntables themselves have an on-off switch. I came in once, it was like this. Uh, I, you just turn that off. So there's two controls right there. Is there a record on that turntable? There is yes. a record. It's a classic. It's in German. Yes. <laughs> Silent night, holy night. I, yes, I thought so. I couldn't. I'm not going to pronounce it. I'm not going to pronounce it. Um, okay, so those. Make sure everything is off behind Devine. Right here. We have the console, which primarily the concern of this console is the CD players. Uh, these currently are off. And there they are. They're on now, and the operation of them uh, is. It's pretty much, it's, it's obvious. You'll have the, uh, the open, uh, open drawer, close drawer, start, pause, power. That's the unit, uh, which is a separate unit, you, which you would, you would learn to, to play with that uh, in, a separate, in a separate time. I'm just going to show you that the fact that it isn't on is what we need. This is the, I don't know if this is working right now. Yeah, it is working. Okay, this is the dump um, for the delay. It, it works on a delay. We can jump. Uh, if someone says something, um, four letter word, we can turn around, hit the switch, and uh, digitally it will um, er erase that, that particular uh, word from, from, the, from, from the conversation. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how it works. Um, can't go into that, but. Yeah, That's well, what it does is it takes away uh, that few seconds and then it uh, compresses and brings the other audio back and forth so there's no blank going out on the air, but the bad word or the sneeze, because you can sneeze or cough, it, you can use it for the sneezing and coughing too. So it's a sneeze, cough, dump button. And it's seamless. Yes. Yeah, yeah it turns out to be seamless. Okay. It's on a seven second delay. That's why when you're in here and you hear the audio, when you go out there, it's it's delayed. Yeah. So I can use that anytime I want? Yeah. Because this Thursday might be the right time to, to have that. To practice. <laughs> yeah. Practice. Absolutely. <laughs> you're spe you're expecting well. some rowdy band, band <laughs> people good. in here. That's good. Um, <laughs> but because of, and remember, because of that delay, if the volume out in the, in the uh, reception area of that radio is too high, yeah. it's going to throw you. It's, it yeah. really oh, yeah. is confusing to hear yourself coming back and forth mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on the delay, on the echo. So, um, all right, that's the delay. This, this is a regular computer. Um, it works uh, as you'd expect. You can, you can call up uh, your browser. Uh, go in, look for uh, information during your show, before your show, uh, whatever you need for, great for, uh, for instant information. It sits there uh, ready for you to use or not. Uh, the console, this is the big issue here. Let me see if I can get a position for this. Uh, it looks more than it really is. Uh, it, it, at first glance, everyone just kind of freaks out over it and, and sees these uh, needles moving and, and all these sliders. Um, but I'll start over here. This is, the, this is the volume for the studio, external speaker volume. 
Sometimes it's in the up position, the volume, but nobody hears anything, and, yep. they, and they and they try to to fuss with it. They try to, to see what you know if they can bring the volume up, and there's nothing happening. And that's because this the uh, control knob, the control button for this is up just above it. So it has to be in the down position. Mm -hmm. Same thing for the headphones. Your headphones are on a separate volume as well. You can hear that. You can adjust the volume of your headphones. Anyone's headphone, uh, anyone connected to this. And there also, there's a button, there's a power switch for the headphones as well. So that too can be a problem if, no, if one isn't aware of it. Um, you need to be careful because your headphones are on, a particular, are on a separate volume as is the air signal. The air signal is adjusted over here on the automation computer. They're adjust, it's, that's adjusted here. So what may be a high level here could, may, might need to be a low volume on your headphones. Yeah. So they, they, they kind of, they, it's a seesaw effect. Yeah. Same thing is true. Same thing is true with guests on their microphones. Guest mic one, two, and three. No, Just mics one, two, and three. Two, two is is, uh, is the host. Yeah. Two is the host. Two is your mic if you're doing a show. Again, you've got volume. You want to be careful with this. You turn the volume on. You turn the mic on, and the volume cuts out for the room. Obviously, we don't want feedback. Once that's on, you can adjust your volume up or down. If you adjust your volume, your mic volume high, you're going to have to want, you're going to have to have your headphone volume low. But it, it all comes back to the VU meters. The, the VU meters are the air signal going out with the which the listener uh, actually hears. These are about these are about right right now. Um, they can go into the red a little bit. They can kiss the red. They can. They can. They can graze the red. Yep. Uh, but not not stay in the red. That's that's called pegging. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Then you you're going to overload the signal. So when one is doing a show, uh, talking to someone uh, who's a guest or playing a CD <clears throat> or a record, you're constantly looking. You're constantly checking the VU meters. I mean, this is, this is the audio for the show. It's not about what's going on in here, it's about what's going on over the air. So these constantly have to be checked um, to make sure that the signal is even. And if someone's talking with a, weaker, with a weaker voice on mic number one, you might have to bring them up higher. Yeah. And and and, you're, and for yourself, you might have to bring it down. I do because a, you talk all the time, yeah. I do a lot of that with my guests, you know, kind of at the beginning, I usually, I'll take, like, this mic, I just turn off. Yeah. And I'll take this mic almost all the way to the top. When I first start talking to somebody, I tell them to get close to the mic, I tell them it's directional. Without fail, you know, they find a spot that's comfortable for them that's somewhere between here and there. And here. Right. And so <laughs> then as they talk and I see where they're, what's comfortable for them, then I back the levels off. Very until good. I get to the spot that's comfortable for them. The other thing that I've noticed with this is if you have live music in the studio, like a guitar and a singer, um, the levels will go outside of the norm a lot more than with like uh, an engineered CD. Mm -hmm. So right. if I've got Brie Capone sitting here singing, the best that I can do is have it averaging there. Right. But when she yeah. hits a heavy note, it's going to bury. It and is. when she lays off, it's going to bury on the other end. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice with live music, it's a little right. harder to keep the levels even. And so you just got to relax a little bit and understand you're going to hit the red. You know, it's going to happen there. So. Right. <laughs> That's good. But a constant, a constant uh, level is, yeah. is the goal. Yeah, to get as close as possible. But with live in the studio, sometimes you've got to... You gotta breathe a little bit because it's it's so it's there's no there's no consistent sound coming right. out of it like there would be with an engineered 
you know, product of music. Right. And I would think that just having it touch over in the high red is not going to be an issue. I've come in here and it is stuck over in the yeah, red and has been like that all night long and the rest of the day until I got in here. So touching it is okay, but it cannot stay over in the red. It's a big deal if it's d doing that. It overloads the system, it can cause problems uh, eventually. Well, so. you mean just distorts the quality of what people are hearing yeah. on the radio. Absolutely. The radio. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and so Absolutely. with static and everything going on, we want to put out the highest quality thing that we can put out there because we want people to hear we don't want that we because after it's it's a known fact that in audio radio if people hear obnoxious sound they're going to turn the radio they're off they're going to change their yes, <laughs> that's the work that way um the important no, the overall point i want to make now is that if you're doing a show it's it's and you're fairly new to this uh sort of thing we're, we're working this is running combo by the way when you're, when you're doing this there's a lot to think about it's not easy because you're you're, you're, you're being your own engineer, you're watching levels, you're checking, you're checking power, uh, and you're also trying to deliver a message. You're trying to make some sense. You're doing two jobs. So you're doing two jobs at once, and it's not easy. What I recommend people do if they're going to do a show for the first time and they're, they're new to radio is simply keep it as simple as you can for your first few weeks. My first few weeks, I freaked I mean, like, when I do my first show. I just ended up playing music the whole hour. <laughs> I just went from one track to the next. <laughs> and, I, I just, and then the next week, I think I said two words. And then it went from there. But there's a lot going on. Until the stuff becomes second nature, it's hard. You know, it really is difficult to, uh, to maintain the show, uh, you know, console a guest, uh, make sure the uh, materials are tracking properly and you have yeah. the right cuts ready to go. There's a lot to think about, and, and you're live on the air, so there's no hiding. Yeah. <laughs> so could they come in and um, practice by queuing up the console? Right. They have. You can do that. Uh, if we go to right now, we're on. If we go to queue, for example, I want to um, I want to see if the CD is going to play. Right. So I'll go over here. Gotta turn around first. You gotta turn around first. I'll go over here. Grab a CD so we can sample. Yeah, okay, we'll do this. Um, used to be one here. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Russ was in last night. He must have put everything back. Well, that, he was good. Yeah, he was a good boy. Okay, so good boy, <laughs> Russ. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. You did, the, you did the right thing. All right, so here's a CD. We'll put this in. And I'll just start it. Volume levels are off. Okay. We've got a CD running over there. And I want to just see if this is going to be right. So I go here to, to a Q. This is a Q volume, which is very sensitive, by the way. Q volume right here. That's the, this is the master Q volume. This is, this is, we're, going to, we're going to have something queued up, so I want to hear it. And that's the Q speaker. Everything else is running normally, mm -hmm. right? So I might even want to turn down, I'll turn it's down the air good. signal, okay? So it's, it's not so dominant. So here's CD, two. CD number two. I turn, I don't even need to turn it on. I put it in Q. And now I hear where we are. If I want to go to the next cut, I'll check and see that's cut two. Cut, cut to. Yeah, you hear that. So we know now that that's good to go. That confirms it for me. So these, any one of these can be CD1, CD2 can be queued up. Um, automation can be queued up. Turntable, that can be queued up. If we start, you want to queue up a record, and make sure you have the right cut, make sure it's, it's working properly, that too can go into queue and check the volume over here. And it's, and uh, it's a quarter turn back. Oh, on a record? Yeah. 
quarter turn back to, to where you want it. To when you hear when you're queuing up the record uh, on the table and you have and you you got the needle in place, you, you turn the turn the record, turn the disc until you hear something. As soon as you hear something, you call, turn it back a quarter turn, yeah. and you're good to go. And that's not that's standard in the business. Uh, so that's that's the other thing. The rest of these of these uh, buttons um, up above here. Everything needs to be in program. That if everything's in program, that means it's going to go out over the air. Mm -hmm. If if you want to get out of program and go into audition, that means it's only going to be heard in queue. It's only going to be heard in the studio. So this audition is the studio. Program is over the air. So it's always good to check to see that you're in program, as we should be. I mean, you shouldn't even have to go there, but. If, if 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 something's not playing and you're not hearing something, yeah. it might be out of program. It might be out of program. Yeah, I only look at those buttons if other stuff isn't working right. Yeah. Right. When I come in, I don't even look at those buttons unless there's something not right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. So and then that, you have to do the checking and eliminating. Yeah. Exactly. Um, which, speaking right. of which, a big one, if you don't mind, if you'll turn that. Please. The, this is a big one, and we had this happen the other day. If you leave, let's say you've got microphone three on, and you're talking, and everybody does their thing, and you leave, and you leave microphone three on, then you're not going to have radio volume in this room. In the studio. And right. So you turn that mic back off. Right. So that can be, if you come in, a lot of times if you come in, it's just dead air. Dead. That's the first thing to look for. Did somebody leave a microphone on? Yeah, and it's easy to be freaked out when you come in ready to do and nothing is, yeah. you're not hearing something. So it's, it's, first of all, it's good to come in 15 or 20 minutes ahead and, and make sure everything is on. But if you're here at the last minute and you come in and you have no audio in here and you need it, then that's the, one of the first places you're going to look. Right. Um, yeah, and it fools you because you have, you'll have the volume, you'll, you'll turn the volume down. Yeah, so slide the volumes down, are down, so you're like, oh, okay, we're fine. And, and, you know, you gotta check, you gotta check the right. buttons. Check those buttons. Um, and then uh, this, uh, remember that the automation is, is the primary source of audio That's the from the get-go, when, when you walk in, this will be running. And this screen, uh, typically is in this position. Um, it can it can fluctuate. It can it can be smaller. Um, it it can be askew. It, it depends on who was in here before uh, last. Um, and I tend to keep it. I like it in the large screen because it's easy to read. Yeah. Um, but basically, uh, if you're going to do your show, I think we've been over this. Well, you know this. Uh, if you can do your show, you wait until the top of the hour, and at that point, you can kill the volume yeah. of, of the automation here, and you let it run, let it continue to run, and have your hour, or have your two hours, and then once you come back to the uh, end of that show, and it's top of the hour, you bring the volume back up, and it's, and it just continually plays. It is, it is, you can stop it if you need to, and play things from this computer, mm -hmm. but... I experienced pretty quickly that it's easier if you can just to let the automation run right. in the background and try to do stuff from other computers if you can. Um, yeah. If you can leave this thing alone, it will make your life easier. Yeah, really. <laughs> and that again, and that come that can, that can come later. Yeah, as you get more familiar. Yeah, yeah. Once you understand the the, yeah, it's and, it's a learning process, a, a, is, a long learning process. It's a single source of audio. That's that's. This is a single source of audio. This is going out over the air. If I stop this, well, I used to stop it and play YouTube. Yeah. You know, because again, it's the same source. And then I stop YouTube, turn this back on, and and bring up the volume you know, yeah. smoothly. And th that can be done, but it's just it really gets to be more complicated when you're right when you when you do that. And if you just cut the volume and go up. Just cut the volume and, and play and stuff. Play everything else. else. Just makes life a lot easier. Right, and you, and you can always, and if something goes wrong in the show and it's really f is failing, you can always go back to this. Yeah. And yeah, you can turn turn that on. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, that's true. That way, if you just sputter, you can just boom, 
Back to automation. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go back. Let's go back. Back to mama. Back to our previous schedule. Which, yes. which is kind of comforting. Yes. Way, yeah. To, to know that. There's backup. Um, and it's a great auto, it's a great uh, programming software. Oh, it really People is. rave Although about it. Even old guys. <laughs> even even old radio guys say this is one of the best programs uh, for radio that I there is. To have gone on before this this was this was uh, in, innovative this innovation came in. You were on your own. I mean, you know, you, you had to finish the show somehow. You, yeah. was, otherwise, you just had dead air. Yeah. And you you know you ran out of there. Uh, so it, it's it's a wonderful backup. It's a wonderful backup. Um, and so when yeah. they when they're uh, when they're doing this when they when they fade it down, you need to watch the view meters here to get it right back up to the proper yeah. level. Yeah. When, yeah. And when you're and when you're leaving at the end of your show, let's say like I come in here from three to five, so let's say five o'clock, I'm walking out of the door. Now if McNair is coming in to shoot a live show, right? Then I'm just going to get my stuff and get out of here. Right. But. Let's say McNair's show is automated. Um, one of the things that you need to realize is that right at the hour, it's going to give our station identification. So if you set it, boom, the hour, and you walk out, those levels are going to change. That's because right. Because that first 10 seconds is going to be a voice speaking, and it's going to be a certain volume, and then it's going to go back into the regular scheduled programming. And so you've got to stick around. 20 seconds or whatever, make sure that the regularly scheduled programming is where you want it in the right meters. Like it's gonna pick up, but that first, this is that station IDM, that's gonna be louder than anything else. So if you set it to that and walk out, then once the music comes on, then it's gonna be, you know, when you're driving in your car and one radio station's at a certain volume and you go to the next radio station and it's really quiet and you're trying to turn it up. That's right. Like that's what you'll do to our the listeners if you're not you'll stick around for just a minute and make sure that the, the programming that's on, that the volume is appropriate to that program. Very good. Very good, yeah. And you also can tell by listening to the radio out in the hallway. So check here and then also double check back there mm -hmm. at yeah. the radio station in the, in the lobby. Can you so hear? always double check. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's basically it. Yeah, if you keep those things in mind. One other thing yeah. that I'd yeah. like to show if we could. It's over Please. here is so with the turntables we have the turntables we've rigged this so that if you want to play music from your phone your computer your tablet whatever device you can it's pretty simple this cord goes in this is connected in the back over here to channel one so if you were going to be playing from this you turn it on you would get the volume up on channel one You'd make sure the volume was on channel was on the master. Turn that down. And then the key is, if you're going to play music from there, you have it up here, this little toggle switch, says phono. But if you want to play music from your phone or your iPad, you need to flip that to line. Right. It's uh -huh. a different way that it takes in yeah. the input. And that's why the first mm -hmm. time you did it, that's why it you had work. all that it's all the static, all the and, the static weird noise. and yep. extra noise. So, so just you switch kicking, it to line, off the line, and then boom, it's good to go. Plug right. it into your phone, plug and play once you have your volume levels up. But sure. do everybody a favor because everybody in here uses the radio station differently. The default setting when you walk out of this room should be on phono yes because right. the next person who comes in is probably more likely going to be playing discs exactly. than from their phone right. and so you want it right for them and mm -hmm. you know what you have to do when you come in so when you leave you just always default everything on phono everything off all the levels down and then go from there very, very good. good. Very good. Yeah, there are, there's three sources of volume. One, two, source, master, and yeah. turntable yeah. over here. And you yeah, can cue it, and you can cue it. And we said that before, for whatever the source is over there. But that's the other. And with the turntable cue light, if you don't hit it hard, it won't come on. You've got to 
really put it in there. Good point. Good point. So that's three controls for that one source. Mm -hmm. And you know, it gets it gets tricky. It gets so tricky. you have to remember that. And after a while, you you, you do. Okay, well, and if you're coming from a device, then you have the volume on your device. On your device so volume. So, so it's yeah. all you got to make sure. And, and, and you if your volume you on do. any of them is too low, then you get too much gain in the system, right. and it doesn't sound right. So you gotta you got to make sure everything. I try to keep, if I'm playing from a device, I usually put my device all the way to the top and then back it off two things. Okay. And then you're around eight. Yeah, around eight. Um, coming out of the device, and then kind of regulate it through there. Through there, I know. So, it's it's tricky because it yeah. you don't want to overload anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's a lot to it's a lot to think about, but uh, at the same time, uh, one can come in here on an off hour, and either by themselves or be with someone else and just practice a little bit. We're hoping in a whole new system where everything goes up to eleven. I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw that movie. <laughs> That'd be one more then. Um, okay, so uh, that's that's basically in reverse. Everything gets turned off. Um, all these all the, the switches go off. Uh, the only one left on is this one, which is the automation computer uh, at the correct volume. You can leave the volume up a bit. We'd like to leave the volume up a bit in the studio, yeah. just, just so people know that it's it's running. Um, and we turn the lights out, check everything that's off, and we turn the lights out and go out to uh, the reception area and um, no drinking or eating in here, yeah. you know, uh, verboten. And uh, just clean up this garbage cans out there by the door, uh, make sure that the front door is locked, turn off the lights. And sign the login. If you're doing a show, you log in yep. to the show over here. And uh, make any notes if anything is, is awry that we need to look at. Very important. And of course, with eating and drinking thing, if you have live musicians, they may need something to drink. I pretty much just do it like this is kind of line. Like if I've got a musician, has to be, yeah, has water. to be covered. It's got to stay on this side of it. I yeah. Don't let them set it over here because this is where the computer is. Yeah. If they need to set it down. There's a covered the container. Window sill yeah. over here. Yeah. Kind of keep it out of the Covered way. container. It's okay. But not anywhere near the broadcast. Not, the not where, not near any of the equipment. Nope. No. No. <laughs> no. We, we, so we had to send the board off. Board too, we had to send. Board. A couple of the pots are off to be repaired yeah. at Mortronics in Wisconsin, who is the only company in the country that that yeah. works on these boards. And it was seven to nine hundred to repair each pot, and it was it was drink damage that did it. Stop it first. Boy. Yeah, hit pause first, or it won't open. Oops. Yeah. <coughs> And this can go in, by the way. This is the brand new John Spick thing. Okay. I think, uh, I think that's it. I think here. that's about okay. it. Okay, and so, so we shut down out here. Pick up after your guest. Look around the studio. If you see any cups or sunglasses or drink or anything, make sure that your guests leave with what they brought in. And uh, leave the studio looking pristine. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay.